Join me. Let's do some art. I am starting today's project with this ring made from MDF board and the lid of a round cardboard box. And I am making sure this is not too large for my miniature, but it's exactly six inches. So this will be a foundation for today's project. And of course, that is part of our monthly four core challenge. So after I glued this together and gave it time to dry, I thought I had my camera rolling, but apparently not. So I added some different pieces of simple cardboard together to make a rock formation. And here you see uh, several more steps I'm taking. So you didn't miss anything very important. I just cut out random bits and glue them together until I'm happy with the shape. So this month's challenge is all about creating a miniature. And I opted to do a natural looking desert scene. So that's what I will be working on. And I think all my steps are pretty easy for you to follow. I started first with cardboard and then I will follow it up uh, by using air dry clay and lots of detailing, of course. And I hope you will enjoy watching my process here. And like always, you will find anything you need to know in the caption. I will explain anything that's necessary. I might talk to you so in between, but surely towards the end. In this video, you will of course also find the lineup of all the photos I received from you for last month's challenge. And then at the end, I will also give you the new challenge. So please enjoy the music and enjoy watching me put this little miniature together.
So here is my miniature desert diorama and it took me way longer to complete this little thing than I had anticipated. I think it's because I went for a realistic look and that's something I hardly ever do in my art so it was an experiment and I learned a lot. It was a lot of fun and I'm happy with the outcome. Now I know it's not ultra realistic but good enough. So I used the air dry clay together with the cardboard to make this cliff formation which I really really like. I also sculpted the cacti which was fun and I gave it lots of detailing and texture just to make them all look a bit different. I fiddled around with the colors quite a bit to make them not static but more alive and yeah different from each other. I added the flowers mainly so I had a reason to add some bright colors and of course I went for textures so there is sand, there are the little rocks, there is uh, the crackle here on the desert floor, there are the sun bleach bones scattered here and there and then of course the animals. Now initially I had thought about making my own but I quickly realized that making them realistic and tiny was just a bit out of my comfort zone. I tried but it was so hard to get the tiny pieces of clay to attach safely and yeah I think I leave that up to the miniature pros. I think these little toy animals worked out really well after they got a treatment with lots of different layers of uh, paint they look more realistic and I studied up a bit their color, what they look like when they live in the desert and so the lizard and the spider have a bit of color to them. Now the snake of course it's more subdued but I love the marking I gave him and his head is not attached so it moves a little bit and I think he looks super cool in his cave back here. So I'm happy with the way everything got together and then of course I had to think about those two arrows I was supposed to include. I happen to have one lonely little metal arrow charm but I wanted to anchor it somewhere so it didn't get lost somewhere on the desert floor and of course the skull came to mind. Now this thing is a bead so it already had a hole on this side and just a tiny indentation of one of the eye sockets helped uh, me to attach those two individual pieces so again it looks like uh, one arrow and I think that's pretty cool. So there's arrow number one. Now for arrow number two I did the cave paintings and you can see an arrow right there in the middle between the two figures. There's actually another one on the side and there's even another one back here in this little cave. Now if I had thought about the cave paintings earlier in my project I may have made the cave a bit bigger but I think it still works just the same. So this was a very fun project. I really enjoyed it and yes I cleaned it up here on the bottom. I put a little felt right here and here's the mechanism so it turns uh, but the rim of the lid I added in the beginning covers that up very nicely so it's a very clean little foot here and of course it helps me to turn this thing and uh, therefore it's easy to be looked at from all angles. So as I said I had lots of fun with this miniature and I think you did too because I received lots of really great photos and of course they're coming up right here in the lineup and then I will be back with you right after. Take your time and check out all the details. Enjoy! <laughs>
So that was the lineup of all the projects from last month's challenge. Thanks so much to all of your artists who played along. Like always, I want to invite you to join in again for the May 4 Core Art Challenge. And like always, if you are new to the challenges, please go below in my description box and follow the link to my intro video and that will get you up to date. It's all very simple. Like always, you have the whole month of May to work on your project. So for this month, I did set a theme and that is related to light. I worded it that way so you have lots of different possibilities of how to interpret this and what you want to use in your creation. Again, you can work two or three dimensional. Let me give you some ideas. Let's say you are making a painting. Just make sure you have either a very distinct light source or you create something that represents light. It could be a lantern, a street light, it could be a candle, it could be whatever you want to add to your painting or your collage. If you have a collage, you can add uh, things like this, a very bright uh, sunlight, but it could also be a lantern or a lamppost. Whatever you can think of that is related to light or is a light would work. Now, if you like to work three-dimensional, there are of course a lot more uh, possibilities. You could make a candle if you are a candle maker. I made this one a long time ago, that's why it's looking pretty old. But you could also just make a candlestick or alter a candlestick. You could make it from scratch or you can just remake something you already have. And that of course extends to any other light sources. Maybe you have a lamp you want to alter or change. Uh, maybe you want to create something from scratch or just add different 3D elements to it. For instance, I have a lantern here. It could do with a makeover. So anything you might have in your stash, look at it in relation to light and see if it fits. You could of course also create something that actually has a working light source within it. There are Christmas lights that can be added. There are these little tea lights. Whoops, this one has, a, anyway, you know how they work. I didn't want to open it yet. I have one of those really tiny lights here too. So that would all work as well. So lots of room here for your imagination. So this is part one, create something related to light. Now for number two, and I have nothing to show you because it was a little hard, I made a little sign. So keep it in a vintage or rustic style. So no matter if it's two or three dimensional, try to keep with this type of idea. So that was number two. Now for number three, we will add a black and white pattern to one aspect of our creation. So let's see, we could create a black and white pattern with stamps, black on white. You could use stencils, just make sure it's a pattern. We could use paper. I have some black and white paper here. I think it has a different design on the inside. I have this one as well. I have some napkins, so there are some dots. Down here there is a checkered design and of course it can also be painted or drawn and it just has to be one aspect. Let's say you are 
doing a painting, you can have a house that has a black and white roof. Uh, you could uh, have curtains that are black and white. Uh, if you use uh, human beings, they could wear something that has a black and white pattern. Uh, you could use it to make a frame, whatever you like, but somewhere in your creation should be a black and white pattern. Any pattern you like, just make sure it has that repetitious design. And that brings me to number four. And like you know, I often like to add something that makes it just a bit more challenging to include. So this time we will use something from the kitchen. Yes, it could be a 3D element or it could be an image of something that usually resides in the kitchen. So let me give you a couple of ideas. It could be something very simple. It could be a spoon. I have a little uh, tea strainer here, a little measuring uh, spoon. And then I also have some images as a refrigerator, there's a pot. And of course, there are many, many more things that fall under the category of things that you find in the kitchen. So that will be the little twist. Try to include it somewhere in your creation. Again, it can be two or three dimensional. So that's it for our May challenge. I hope that you all will enjoy this one and play along. So in review, again, we're working two or three dimensional as you like, and we will create something related to light either a painting, a collage, or three-dimensional something. A second, we will all keep it in a vintage or rustic style. Third, we will uh, make a black and white pattern just on one element or one aspect of your creation. You can use paper, pen, stencils, stamps, whatever you like. And number four, we will all add something that usually resides in the kitchen, be it three or two dimensional. So I believe that's it for today. Like always, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any question about the challenge or anything else, just leave me a comment below or leave me a comment one way or the other. <laughs> I always like to hear from you or write me an email, whatever is most convenient for you. I see you soon again, as soon as my next project is done. Have fun, enjoy the challenge. Like always, you will find a list of the four core elements at the end of this video as well as below in my description box. Take care, stay well and creative, and bye-bye for now.